This week's YKWD is brought to you by Policy Genius. If someone relies on you financially for financial support, child, a wife, a husband, a aging parent, a business partner, you need life insurance. Policy Genius is your one stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com slash YKWD and answer a few questions. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The team of licensed experts at Policy Genius will help you understand your options and apply the policy you choose. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. You can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. Okay, head to policygenius.com slash YKWD to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you could save. Uh, you guys know I love this company. I'm so proud that they're a sponsor. This week's YKWD is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. The podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And you know what, dude, listeners, you get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash dude. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash dude. What's going on? It's Robert Kelly here, and I want you to join my Patreon. I got this. Why is Andrew Schultz sitting like a lesbian? I got that. Take a look. <laughs> this too. Oh, what's in the box? Dude. Oh, whoa. I've been waiting months for this. And check this out. Oh, no. All right, we have a special guest coming in. Your background. What is that? Hold on a second. Somebody's teasing me. Hold on a second. That's not my fault. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> this is on there. I think we definitely empowered trolls. We gave trolls a template for how to nail each other. And this. Less titty challenge. Yeah. Oh, shit. Did you break your bed? It don't matter. I think that's it. Nope. You get this, too. Dead. 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 Uh, it's it. always been fun to be friends with you <laughs> doing stand-up comedy all these years. So hit the button. Click it. Patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. You'll thank me later. Patreon.com with Robert Kelly. I talked to Uncle Judah Johnny Shack the other day. It's good for business. Yeah, baby. We're starting the podcast right now. We're back. You know what, dude? Live. Welcome, everybody, to the show. YKWD. I started the social media and podcast. <laughs> the fact. The YKWD podcast. YKWD is back again. Old school. Back in the day. Where it all started. Before them all. YKWD. YKWD. Podcast is so fun and crazy. It has no rules. Shut up, you're no. ruining this. Where's the bandana, man? I'm sorry, it's a comedy podcast. This isn't NPR. That's what this podcast does. Is there any better show? This is the original. Original. Yes. I am back on land. Captain Bobby, excuse me. Captain Bobby's back. Um, I did not, I, I'm so sorry. I did not do a YKWD from the boat. I did a whole intro, this beautiful intro with the sun setting and the, I was on my balcony. So what I'm going to do is it's going to be a little different this week. And you know, YKW do sm little small interviews and put them together. None of it happened. I'm lazy. I am depressed. I got seasick and I ate too much and my bed separated and it made me feel fat. So we don't we, we we will have a bunch of clips this week going up on Patreon and we're going to have a vlog, right? Nikki? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh fucking here's a scenario, Kalta and Kelly uh YKWD vlog of all the footage. We took a lot of footage me and the three girls, Aunt Brandon, Auntie Sagalo. 
<laughs> and uh, Feeney and uh, and uh, and what's Cannon? Cannon, Jesus Christ, and Mike called the sorry. Great time on the cruise, but we're back in the studio. What a day I've had, and now I'm here. Uh, don't forget to go to wearables, comicwearables.com. Just go there. Listen, I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon. If you're watching this right now, it's probably free on fucking YouTube, and that's all cool. But if you're supporting me, uh, you're getting it first. Number uno, you're watching it live right now. And you're also in the comments in the chat, and you get to do that and uh, participate. And we do the uh, reads at the end, and you're a part of that. That's the patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. And I want to thank all you guys for supporting me over there. It means a hell of a lot to me. I mean that sincerely. I do. Um, so there you go. We're comicgribbles.com. Use code word ladybugs. And make sure if you are watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment. Just that's it. Click it. Like it. Become a subscriber. And that's it. And today's show is going to be fucking epic. And I didn't mean to swear. I hope I don't get kicked off. I don't I don't I don't want to get unmonetized for saying the F word. Gosh darn it. Ugh. Um, that's what it's coming to. Uh today, uh Nikki, introduce everybody, please. Sure. We have Andy Fiore. Bingo. And we have Big J Emerson. Bingo. And we got Nikki on the side, and of course, Joe. Uh, Joe Russell is here too. So, uh, what's up, fellas? What's going on, buddy? <laughs> How you doing? I uh, put my both headphones on. You get serious now. <laughs> um, what's up, dude? I first of all, you for this is what happens with podcasts all the time. I've been doing this for so long, but you wind up coming in, and because we're comics, we're so used to fucking conversating, and all like he's he just started talking, and we were talking about all this shit, and I'm like, dude, stop. Stop, stop. The mic goes on. And then you came in and you're like, dude, what about that? And I was like, fuck. Save it for the pod. And I'm just, I hate saying that. I hate it. Save it. I mean, it happens every day at Bonfire, too. We meet up like a half hour before. Right. And then we're sitting in there just saying stuff like, guys, we're we're literally going to talk about it immediately. <laughs> yeah. And now I have to act like this thing you're saying is funny again. <laughs> is Like the first time it made me laugh. Now we're going to be like, oh, now you're re-saying it for everybody. Yeah, I wish we all, I wish, remember the old peep shows where everybody had their little room you went into? And then there was the main room where the chicks were. Mm -hmm. I wish that was sure. like a podcast thing. Where you guys came into Jay's room and Andy's room and I was in another room. <laughs> and they was like, all right, guys, let's, and we all come in at the same time. Yeah. Like a peep show. Yeah, or just, you know, it's like a rodeo. Just release us at one point. <laughs> just meet in the middle and start talking. <laughs> hey, guys, can we have that song? Yeah, it's on Nikki Glaser Dude. Road and blah, 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 blah. Well, because I'm so excited to see, like, we're all on the road. Everybody, we don't see each other all that often. I'm always excited. I get so much to see to say to yeah, everybody. Yeah, it is. It's like as soon as you see somebody, you want to just start yapping yeah. and talking. I want to do this. I want to make a genie bottle podcast studio with doors. So when you show up, you have to go in your little room. It's going to be uh, sectioned off. Sectioned off in your room, but comfortable section. I guarantee people will jerk off in them, just like Times Square. So it so when I introduce you, a thing opens up and you stick it, <laughs> and then you come in. Would I'll that be, be cool? I'll be vaping and playing solitaire. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, hey. You can personalize your own stall. To do whatever you want. No, we'll personalize it for you. Ooh. I'm getting. I'm really getting ahead of myself. She's probably fucking. What was Andy saying that you wanted to save for the pot? Andy, I remember my thing. The, and you're a part of this. You remember your thing. Uh, Andy, actually, good. You can ask me. This uh, is weird. This is weird because not many people ask this question. Do you have you? Are you having a baby? No. OK, go ahead. Well, because we brought you got a puppy. You asked Bobby if he was having a baby. No, no. I am that big. <laughs> <laughs> I but I did it. rub his belly and put my ear up against his stomach when I walked in. I was walking down the cruise hallway and I'm walking and I saw two old ladies come and they stopped, saw my size. <laughs> Turned around and walked back to the Come on. elevators, waited for me, and then walked back down. Oh, let you get to the bank area. Yeah. Elevator bank. Yeah, that hurts. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it, feeling fat on a cruise ship, though, is like feeling fat at the gathering of the juggalos. It's, you shouldn't. You should feel <laughs> yeah. great about yourself. No, you're absolutely right. There was not you know, one help. I mean, person. some of those people are at death's door. I mean, yeah. they put, you know, Mike Fanoi called it uh, cruise nachos, and it's a great term for it, but I've mm -hmm. seen this. Like, they go through that buffet and like, oh, there's prime rib now and then the pasta and then a hot dog and then whatever. And then on top of all of it, just squirt nacho cheese on yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And I, and I don't know if they attack it with a fork and knife or what, but it looks like. So hungry. But I know like. 
Dude, I did that. Really? I, well, well, here's the thing. I mean, obviously not exactly that. They, did, they don't have that on cruises anymore. Like, the, they have it breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner, and they shut it down. The cruises we went on, you uh, go nonstop. Th- three in the morning yeah. and go get food. Yeah. Not anymore. Room service isn't free anymore. Because of COVID. COVID. And the money they lost, I would imagine. You know, Does Vegas lost still some, like that? Just I don't know. Buffet? But it was, you had to go up. But I did that. I did, like, Indian pizza, ice cream, <laughs> cereal. Like, I did some weird shit on the cruise. In a sitting? In a sitting, cereal after after pizza. Yeah, they had cereal. That's a <laughs> it's a dessert. You can uh, I was can it rationalize a, it. Was it in a, one of the screw things that releases it? It was in oh, something. Yeah. yeah, like you have to. No, you have to get it from the lady or some shit. That's one of my yeah. favorite. Talk about a fat guy excitement. Totally. Cereal. When I'm going down, when I'm leaving my hotel to go to the airport to go come back home, you fill your hoodie pockets with cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Like a goat. <laughs> just keep it in my gloves. <laughs> just put it in the little <laughs> kangaroo pouch. <laughs> my Joey. I uh no, it's such a great feeling when you come down. Because I'm that ne- I've never when I when I would do press when I go to town, when I'd go do morning press, yeah. Uh sometimes I'd come back and have like the breakfast that's at the hotel. Yeah, but, of course. Yeah, but for the most part at this point now, I never ever have that breakfast. But when you're leaving and your car's coming to get you like six thirty and it's breakfast is set up and you get to go crank a little Cereal. A little bowl yeah. of cereal while you're oh. waiting because it's a cereal that I'll never buy. Right, yeah. Fruit Loops or yeah, something like that. Flakes, yeah, like a Frosted Flakes. They're the best. They're the yeah. best. I used to know. I did recently Frosted Flakes combo. Oh, I love a combo with uh, cocoa pebbles. Ooh, that's a that's right. a weird combo. It's a great combo. It's a weird one. I think they also make chocolate Frosted Flakes. Chocolate Frosted Flakes. That's great. That's actually what you're making. Yeah, yeah I get you. Okay, I I hear it now. It makes sense to me now. Yeah, <laughs> dude, cereal to me. I can't eat it because I immediately get bloated, like oh, really? like a beached whale. You know, like a whale's on the How beach for like a week and it just starts expanding until it explodes. Well, look at a bowl of just pour a bowl of cereal and just walk away from it. Whatever kind of cereal it is, it's going to be like fills the bowl. Yeah, it swells up, and in my stomach it swells <laughs> up, and I hate that feeling. I hate being fat, but I hate feeling swollen. Right here. Yeah, like right, right yeah. there. Yeah, we all know. <laughs> That's the spot when you sit back and you go. What have I done? Like, and you're like, why is this hard? <laughs> it's visceral fat. <laughs> it's the fat that attaches. It's hard to, yeah, it, ta- it yeah. attaches like venom inside right. your rib cage. Yeah, the way it feels right here, you're like, it's gotten so much here. <laughs> it's it's pushing up. Yeah. That's what it is. It's pushing to my heart. It's coming for it. <laughs> cereal is the best, dude. You know what I like to get? A Tupperware bowl and eat cereal. I don't like eating out of a small bowl. Wait, wait, wait. But uh, in a square? No, no, Tupperware. that's not cereal shit. Like the the, the yeah. bowl, the big that you would normally chip, put like, like a chip. away pasta in. Right. Yeah, like pasta <laughs> or chips. I like that bowl, and then filling it up, milk, and then getting an extra big spoon. Oh my! Let God. me. Uh, yeah. Do you pour? And this is not an exact sign. Are you milk first cereal, cereal then milk, cereal then milk? Of course, absolutely. Because yeah. how do you know how much? I what? Who's doing that? I've seen it done. Before several times, but I will say that uh, psychotic. I'm cereal first and milk because, of course, uh, if you put just the milk in first, what I've found is you pour the cereal on top, it's going to float on top of the milk. So, yeah, right. you're going to get barely to put any cereal. You're going to have a bowl of milk with a, a topping of, yeah, whatever, just right. Yeah. <laughs> just. I like oddly healthy cereals or the shittiest of the sugar. I agree. Give me a plain Rice Krispies, I love it. Yeah, I think it's delicious. Nothing in between. I could do. Yeah, I could, I could do total. I love total. Do you know what I just bought recently? Honey nut checks. Checks are good. Never been a checks man, but I honey nut checks. checks Dude, are loved good. it. Uh, what What are the ones that look like uh, wheels? Honeycomb. Cheerios. Honeycomb. Dude, I'll fuck up a honeycomb. Alphabets. It's all the honeycomb. same thing. It's the uh, one of the good things about doing uh, Buffalo com- comedy. Buffalo helium. The back door of the place is. You could smell in the air. They it's the General Mills, and they do the burn offs every day, so they burn off all like the defective, you know, misshapen or whatever cereals. Oh. And the air in town just smells like Lucky Charms. Oh God, I I actually have a friend of mine who I buy just the Lucky Charms marshmallows. And you can put them in any cereal. You can. You just eat them just, by the handful. He eats them by the handful. Oh really? <laughs> but bags this big. But they pulverize in your mouth off of Amazon. You no, they just you, dude, you, you got to wet them. Yeah, you're in your mouth. You wet them. 
No, he, he loves it. Oh, you just them. gather them in your mouth and let them become marshmallows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn, dude. When did this become a science podcast? <laughs> I used to eat Rice Krispie Treat cereal handfuls. I would just scoop it Rice, out of what, what? What? This what? was like Rice Krispie Treats cereal. Rice Krispie Treats cereal came out probably early 90s when I was still in cereal. That's mode. like Crystal Pepsi shit. I can't that's believe you guys That's like Crystal it. Meth shit. What are you crazy? I don't know why I love Cookie Crisp, but if they made Chips Ahoy brand Cookie Crisp, I go, this is fucking weird. <laughs> I would not. Yeah. I don't like Cookie Crisps. It's just not a. It's it's a it's a when you put it you, you can't get enough in your mouth because when you put a whole big thing it's like it's uncomfortable it doesn't you know what I mean like I like a cereal that when you put a big scoop in your mouth yeah it forms to the inside of your mouth yeah mm-hmm. that's a rice crispy you can't do that what's, with a fucking cookie crisp what's your most like shameful act of eating I know <laughs> I know one of mine for sure that I've always it was try upon someone's suggestion but like putting a a, a grip of Oreos in a bowl and pouring milk on it like it's cereal and eating it with a spoon. That's you're delicious. Like, it is delicious, but you're like, <laughs> we've just, come on, man. That yeah. sounds fucking beautiful. I have a bad one. It was really, really good. Reason. The fact, this is how fat you are. You know what the sleeve, you called it a grip. Yeah. You know what, a, you know what it's technically called? Is it called a grip? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, oh, just, you saying, made I'm, that just, I'm just saying, like, yeah, you just oh. grab like a bu- <laughs> I thought you, I thought the whole sleeve you know, was you called could, a grip. You could treat you yourself. You could treat yourself. Like I, th- I thought that was the Oreo factory. Yeah. How many grips did you? I did. Uh, well, how many grips to a pallet? If I'm eating, if I'm eating Oreos by the one in a glass of milk, I'm feeling guilty by four, and you stop. That's a good thing. Four. When you could just choose, like, well, I got to fill the bowl to put milk in. It's not going to make any sense. Mm. So you're eating like nine in a bowl. Yeah. It's crazy, but yeah. motherfuck, it was good. It sounds fantastic. It was so good. Yeah. It sounds when your spoon, uh, some of your spoon can just. Sort of break. Do you like it? a hard chocolate chip cookie or a, a mushy chocolate chip cookie? I like a hard that I make mushy. Yeah, I need a combo. You make mushy with milk. Yeah. Yeah. Tate's cookies are pretty great for that. Tate's yeah. cookies are great. After you put the milk in it and then you suck the milk out of it almost. I like a hard mushy cookie. Me too. Sure. I like a hard mushy chocolate chip cookie where it's on the outside, it's a little hard. And then on the inside, it's a mush. That's egg. it. You give me a hard outer. Yeah. Mush center. Oh, God. A little undercooked it. in the center. The best cookie in the world. What is the best cookie in the world? Chocolate chip? Here, uh, Straight up. Yeah. Little. Like, give me Pillsbury. Cho- some kind of chocolate chip. I like the Dutch cookie with the chocolate on one side and the biscuit type of thing on the other. Oh, yeah? I like those. It seems like a dog treat. It, it looks like a dog <laughs> treat. But when you bite into the cookie, it's sweet. And then all of a sudden the milk chocolate takes over and it's real milk chocolate. Yeah. From like Europe. And it's like, oh, it melts in your mouth. Yeah. Black, so and, good. black and white cookies are overrated. That's like slave food. I think anything bakery. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like one of the like, simple things. Oh, no, that no, good? No. People go, this is fantastic. He goes, it's the shittiest icing yeah. on a okay. okay piece of cake, sort of. But at, at the Chico's where I live, uh-huh. they make a mini black and white cookie that comes 10 in a box. I'll crush all 10. Dude. Easily. It's the best black and white cookie mm-hmm. ever because it, it tastes like a ring ding. The chocolate, they use the same chocolate they use on a ring ding. And they use so they use vanilla it. frosting and then ring ding hard so it hardens on the top. You buy and it's a moist cookie. It's not dry. It's a moist cookie. Okay. I'm in. I'm in. I like black and white cookies. I just think some people are like, that's the dominant cookie. Where do you throw oatmeal raisin in the batch? Not a raisin guy, personally. Wow, love an oatmeal raisin, and some milk. Milk's I, the X factor. I will. Lo- I'll sit yeah. for an hour and a half eating Oreos with milk. Do you drink the milk after you're done with the Oreos? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't do chocolate milk. It has to be white. White. No offense. No, I don't want to cause any problems, but it has to be white milk. White. No, absolutely. Yeah, okay. completely. White. I tried Pure, chocolate milk. It was too much. Pure white Aryan milk. Pure yeah. white Aryan two percent. <laughs> From a racist cow. <laughs> yeah. From a cow. Nope. From Allentown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Did you ever see those? Uh, I think the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a bunch of them, but like the real documentaries of the skinhead guys uh, and like other people, like the real like white supremacists, like skin. HBO did a bunch of them. And, and there was somebody who was like, me and Kurt Metzger used to laugh at it so much. It was like, well, it's Hitler's birthday, so we celebrated by making a white cake with white frog, with only made with egg whites, and like every ingredient had to have like the word pure white. vanilla ice cream. <laughs> and it's just people living like you know outside their house. Like most of their chairs are just tires on their side. It's like, just a mess. They just have a backseat of a fucking truck as a front lawn chair. <laughs> oh, I don't know something about that though. I was I was on the perimeter of that growing up. 
like that kind of white trash like the remember rocky dennis with the movie mask yeah yeah remember like the people that hung out like yeah. it's like yeah, gar kind of, yeah gar it felt like that kind of party's going not so much bikers some bikers mm -hmm. but just like and my mom wasn't that my mom's just like a jewish chick from philly but her friends were like people where we end up being i'd be like the kid at that kind of party yeah everyone it, was nice it was always fine but it was definitely like a it was a couch outside mm -hmm. You know, like the like Ruth's family in Ozark. That scared, that scared the fuck out of me as a kid because I grew up in Boston in the city. And when I went to uh, my first foster home, my, my second foster home, my first one was in Lynn, which is inner city, urban, you know, kind of tough. The, and they sent me to a uh, uh, one out in, way out in the country in Massachusetts. And I remember I got there and, and I got into this. It was almost like this fucking farmhouse on this road and you had to walk over a bridge to get to this little town. And I walked over with the, the foster brother who was kind of like a, the guy from Goonies just as big hello. And he took me downtown to the bowling alley and the kids were there. They all had buck knives and jeans and, and they took, we went back to the house and they had that, the, the sh that shit, that shit furniture on the front lawn. And we went up to the attic that they made into the kid's room and we smoked weed and, Dude, I was petrified. We go out in the night into the woods, and I'm like, they're gonna fucking kill me. Like, this is <laughs> these guys have all these kids have knives. Yeah, I did Boy Scouts for uh one or two weeks. I made it to like a camping trip, and I was like, I don't want this. Isn't like my thing. Yeah, I don't mind that shit, but like, no, red, you, like rednecks, you're, super, you're super into it. Now. Rednecks it. scare me. Like they scare oh, yeah. me more than like inner city. Ah, like I'm ah. more scared out in the woods. Than I would be well, I, oh, in like too. uptown. Yo, me too. Yeah, because well, there's nowhere I'm, to go. Woods is terrifying because there's no escape. <laughs> yeah, that's there's like if I said, I think I may have told you this before. My my girlfriend when I was young, or so I was like maybe nineteen. She was seventeen, so like that. When uh, and when she lived with her family still, and her family, you know, she had like a curfew and everything. She would sneak out to come see me. Yeah, and what she would she lived on a in a double wide trailer like through woods this is when i moved to south jersey this was philly yeah and uh and there was this like kind of woods there was this cul-de-sac lovely that i would go drive into and i would blink my lights and she would somehow in a fucking charlotte hornets pullover starter <laughs> just emerge from the wood and she went a good four or five minutes walks like through like a trail wood. Uh, not a trail no no, no. she went because she jumped out of her window and just, just bush go right into what yes yeah. yeah, so she just kind of went through woods get a machete <laughs> and, and would just uh, emerge out of the sink and come fuck and then i'd drop her back off and she would just you sure she disappear back into the woods <laughs> <laughs> you sure this was like a, a a witch that you were fucking yes <laughs> well my dad shoeless joe told me if i go there she'll come <laughs> if i just believe <laughs> If you park it, but she would, um, and I was like, I was like, I tell you, there's not a chance. If you suck, it, I will come. <laughs> there's not a flip. There's not a flip situation of that that I could see myself doing Dude, that. I would not do that. I, I would like exactly. You I understand how how powerful pussy is that you would just go to the woods, the edge of the woods, and and flick your lights, and a chick would emerge. And that didn't freak you. That didn't bother you. At, that was just like, okay. And then you just drop <laughs> her off, the and she would just go into the woods. I mean, she's, you, like, she's like my long, many, many years girlfriend, believe it or not. It's but like, crazy. But she was, uh, yeah, but when she did that, I was like, I would have never done that. For anybody. F uh, certainly for I her, thought... I wouldn't have. No. No, no, I'm not talking about an emergency. I'm talking about, Dude. hey, you can come see me at, uh, I'm you, like have sex even when it's that young and you're like excited to have sex uh, like that excited for it. I still would be like, no, nah, man, there's like it's not even intangible. Forget all the obvious things know. that will go through my head, like monsters and, and killers and whatever. The simple like you saw me, Bobby, where there's a raccoon on the table when we were camping. I couldn't have left faster. <laughs> we, we, had, we moved our leaving up an hour because I was like, I can't. I, these things are looking at me. We had to get it. We were in camp and we did the comedy camp. Yeah. I was like, we got to have the bonfire because it's a bonfire. The things, campers, this is, makes complete sense. And everyone was like, yeah. And then I was like, well, you have to have a tent. And, the, and they were like, Jay's not staying. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? They're like, Jay and Dan. I'm not going to be in it. There's no tent involved. Yeah. So I had to get a can like a um one of the houses, the cabins. A little cabin. I got back. I got this big cabin. 
so that they could stay inside. Because that, that was when Mush uh, snored on, and uh, put Dan. Dan woke up with like Ren and Stimpy eyes, where you see all the veins in them and shit. <laughs> It was ah! crazy. I've never seen Dan mad like that. He went and slept oh, in my car. Gets... He ended up sleeping in my car. <laughs> Why? Because Mitch was snoring so loudly? But it wasn't snoring. Snoring is not. And I snore. We talked about this earlier in the bonfire. I snore. But Mush was doing something different. Like sleep apnea? <laughs> Dude, was, like sleep, like was, terror. He was said, actually <laughs> snoring himself back to life. I, you, like he, uh, that's, that's exactly what we said. He, He'd go. When he would die out, he'd uh, go like, this is what I would go. He'd go, he'd go like, Ugh. And every time he was That's done snoring, it seemed like he died. Up sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. No, dude, he's little deaths. Wait, how's he, how does he go again? It, it's the die down first. He goes. It's like the build up. He goes. It's like, and it's like he dies. He cuts out. He goes. And then he comes back. Like goes. It was so disturbing, it's- dude. I caught and it on Dan, video. It's his soul. Dan started to blaring. Dan started blaring classical, like chamber music, in his headphones. I'm like, "What?" He goes, "It calms me." Dan was so angry. I'm like, "That's what a fun fact about." I Dan. feel bad for Mush because Mush was. Trying, he hated. It. He, he was so sad because he was I'm like, sure he felt "He's like, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry," and he would try to stay up oh. to, to let Dan go to sleep because if Dan could go to sleep, then he could go to sleep. You know what I mean? But. I don't know he because crash. I'd be more pissed if I was sleeping soundly and then got woken up and wasn't be able to yeah. fall back asleep. Me and Christine were just woofing in our room. We didn't give a shit. <laughs> I felt we were a three part harmony, man. We were like, <laughs> we were like three dog night. Uh, oh, fucking A, dude. So yeah. you were asking me, he asked me a question at the beginning. Oh, yeah. What? Well, we said Jay got a dog and then you were saying we talked about his vagina. Oh, sorry. And that's not what I was talking about. <laughs> that's weird. Uh, the dog's buzzy? No. <laughs> it's a tube. It's weird. <laughs> and then the bottom, I asked. You asked. I don't know how you went from Jay's. I'll tell you. <laughs> he, went from, he went from that to this. Well, because I, I asked you, I was like, wait, did you always want a, a son <laughs> instead of a daughter? I don't understand because how you my, go from Jay's dog's pussy to, did you always want a son? Well, yeah. in my head, I didn't know what you guys were he talking like, about. Like, Jay's dog has a pussy. Bob's <laughs> son has a penis. There we go. Connecting dots. I didn't know what capacity you guys were talking about the vagina in. So I was like, oh, is it maybe is it weird having a new dog? You got to clean up after it a lot. Maybe you're touching the pussy, you know? No, well, you don't have to touch a dog's. You, have to, you never have to touch a dog's pussy. All right, I'm not. You a don't dog. have to. You don't have to. I mean, this little tube though. I want to see if I can get a pinky in it. Looks like I can get a pinky in it. Dude, I was saying, <laughs> I was saying that I never, I've never seen my dog's pussy. Uh huh. Like, I don't even know where it is. But anyways, I did when I, I actually wanted a girl. Oh, okay. Me and my wife w- really wanted a girl. We picked out the name and everything. What Gem- was the name going to be? Gemma. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And did you have feelings? Uh, what, like, what was the reason for that? Was there, were you worried? Do you have like a rough thing? Were you worried about like passing along? Maybe like you worried about your father's thing with you and with a son, like fathers and sons. You think you can kind of like what thing? I was scared about being a dad. I was scared about um being a yeah. Have you know? Am I not describing that well? I'm saying no. You are. Are you? Scared? You're, you're, you're picking up your dad. Like I worried about that. Like. Especially when me and my ex broke up, my wife, it's like, you're like, shit, man, I don't want to be like a sh-. Like, my dad uh, forced oh, my mom gotcha. and was, like, gone. And I was like, yeah. is that just in me, too? Yeah. You know, like, you, you, you worry gotcha. about that. I, I wanted, I don't know, I just wanted a girl. We both wanted a girl. And I remember when we were in the room and the doctor's like, okay, you ready? And we were like, yep. <coughs> and she's like, there's his testicles. <laughs> and we were both like, yay. It's a boy. We were like, oh, that's great. It's a boy. We were both. Not disappointed, but disappointed. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you and can kind of cover it up for the nurse. Well, yeah, we were just like, oh, we thought it was a, we thought it was a girl, and then it was a boy, and then you immediately go into just let, let make it be healthy. Healthy, yeah, yeah. Because we already had a miscarriage, we don't want to deal with that right. shit. And and then when Max came out, I was so so. I believe that when a when a woman gives birth, the crying and the is real. I think the, all the stuff the guy's doing is pretend. Like, I'm supposed, oh, my God, this, because we're so fucked up. What happened when, that, when he first I came out? When he first came out. Well, it's not was, genuine, I, you're saying? It's not genuine, but it's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. It's more like I'm in shock. 
Uh, so I'm not connected to it. I, a woman, I feel like, immediately connects to that child. And for me, I slowly, it slowly became real because it was so fucking foreign to me. Like right. I it's couldn't, very chaotic. I couldn't believe that I'm, this is real. Like uh, there's a, there's a, there's a human in my life that I made with my dick fucked me up. It just didn't make sense <laughs> to me. Yeah. And slowly but surely, it, it, I started really emotionally. I fucking love. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not that like it took seven you years. Huh? Did you cry? I've, I've, I cried later. Later. I think I would. I'm I didn't cry. cry. I, I, cried, I, cried I cried a this. little bit in there, but. Yeah, I'm a crier. I, uh, that, when Isabella came out, I cried immediately. I just right away noticed, like, she's very much like a Carla to me, like in the face. Yeah. And I was just like, it just seems, it just seems surreal. Like you said, I was yeah, like, crying. Yeah. I was like, yo. Yeah, I was in like, shock. Like, this is our kid. Yeah, like, everything you just said, but it really, like, I was in shock too, but definitely I started crying. I was like, involuntary. I think I would too. Yeah. I cried, I cried a little bit, but I, I was disconnected to it. It was so surreal. Yeah, I saw a fucking head come out of a pussy. Oh, you! I don't care who it. you are. That that's fucking, a lot. Did it's you watch a lot. when I brought up, when I brought my uh, father in law to see her in the hospital? Like right after, like a couple hours later, I went to go get him, and we came back to the hospital, and I was like, you know, I saw Isabel and the thing. I was like, I was like, you know, the the nurse holds her yeah. up for yeah. her. She can't hold her yet, and uh, and I was like, right there. So she goes over and holds it, and they put her sideways. And she had fucking pussy head, you know, like when it's like it didn't like come down yet. Yeah. Like it's like it's, it was oh, right, hers right. was almost like a fucking point, and I was like, <laughs> "You!" And the nurse was almost like through the through that like bulletproof glass. She's like, "No, no, 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 it goes <laughs> down. It goes. It'll be done by tomorrow. Yeah. It'll be back." And I'm like, you, "Yeah, I'd be terrified. Ouch. I'd be terrified that they would mix up my baby. I have all sorts of anxiety without even having you have to you yeah you, with your baby's head like we you have to turn your baby when it naps." Every like half so hour, you get misshapen because, dude, I, I know it, Travis's kid on from uh Jim and Sam, the baby had to wear a helmet. Oh, yeah, you had to wear a, a head helmet to form, you know, form the head because when it comes out, it's so mushy that my mother always says, You should thank me for your good bald head because my mother would turn me every half hour, on, so I didn't. I didn't flatten out one Where side one of my side. fucking head. Yeah, isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can have a horrifying. The back of your head can go flat from just lying there. Is that how we get like pinheads and shit? Yeah. Real freaks? Well, I oh, think. Oh, pinheads is a thing. Is that from not, some, not being turned when you sleep? What the- <laughs> you think you can become a circus act from not being yes. turned? I don't know. What, what's Meet a pinhead? the pinhead. You know, the Beetlejuice is a pinhead. Oh, no, that's, yeah, that's disease. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah, know if it was because maybe, you know. Zika, some... Zika virus. Yeah. Uh, people uh, be uh, f- the, f- bat, the flathead in the back is from not turning a baby. Uh-huh. Yeah, not all, not every parent fucking gives How a about fuck. about a bearded lady? Head head. Is that also from not being turned every half hour? <laughs> yeah. What other freaks can we make with this? Lobster theory? hands? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the lobster boy? Uh, the snake lady? What do you, I, I don't, what do you do when your baby comes out with fucking just a thumb and a finger? I mean. I don't know. Uh, oh. You try not to just go. Ah. Yeah, I don't know. You got to fight your first instincts when they hand it to you to be like this. Be like, oh, <laughs> oh it's so squishy. Can I, <laughs> you gotta be, can I get that one? Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> can I get that, <laughs> that that Filipino one right there? <laughs> yeah, when you look at your baby and the first thing you have to think to yourself is like, at best, People are going to call this kid brave. That's the best we're going to get at him. And it's yeah, going mean, to be because he sings like an angel at some kind of a John Stewart party or something. What? <laughs> <laughs> you ever oh, seen him? <laughs> Did you ever... <laughs> Baby Jesus. The Dude. One of the biggest bonds me and my daughter ever had was the john stewart's night of a thought too many stars yeah i remember that thing and at the end of it it's just because just give the money it's a great cause you don't have to keep parading them around <laughs> and making them like fucking be these awkward moments steve carell was supposed to be interviewed by a girl who uh, types in like one of those steven uh what do you call it things Stephen hawking, Stephen hawking things you know she types with a, <coughs> she looks at letters real quick <laughs> i mean no, no bullshit whatever it is yeah. it was pre-recorded because she wasn't doing it in real time because when she are you was, judging she doing, her no not at all i'm saying well they shouldn't <laughs> have had her come out at all they, then they have her she stands up when stephen colbert like answers and the, oh. the computer's still talking but she stands up 
this is live and she just stands and she does like a weird like not tantrum she like walks in a circle like a dog telling you it's gonna rain and then like sits indian style in the middle and then they have to go to commercial they throw to like olivia Munn who's in the back like uh hey everybody we're getting money for these goofballs and like and uh <laughs> the goofballs for these goofballs and at the end <laughs> they have this girl come out highly functioning yeah uh she beautifully sings with this girl uh <laughs> The girl from uh, The Outsider, the one who's like the psychic, the black lady. Okay. Anyway, she sings with her. The, the autistic girl or whatever plays piano. Yeah. And sings this rise up. And I rise up. It's in the middle of the song. Yeah. They just release a cage in the back of like 200 uh, kids uh, who uh, some of them are air guitaring and, and just like Stevie Wonder heading. There's no guitar in the song. Uh, they can't keep them like one of them thinks Sleepy he's the, con- heading. the one of them thinks he's conducting so like he's stand and they have to keep pushing him back in line he keeps getting out and like telling this everyone they're doing chaos it was chaos and i'm like just give the money you don't have to keep the- okay stop this is uncomfortable for everybody involved you gotta wrangle them on stage they're- remember mosh bidding are you really mad that the kid was air guitar and there was no guitar <laughs> yes i was why i was because they shouldn't have put him out there This week's YKWD is brought to you by Policy Genius. If someone relies on you financially for financial support, a child, a wife, a business partner, you need life insurance. Life insurance can give you the peace of mind that if something happens to you, the people you love will have some financial cushion for rent, mortgage, payments, loans, education costs, everything, everyday expenses. Listen, man, uh, you know, I mean, I'm a comic. I'm a comic. I'm out there all the time. I'm not a multimillionaire. I don't have, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, gazillions of dollars in the bank. I have a great life. I do fine. I do great. But if something happens to me, I don't want to leave my wife and kid high and dry or, or scared or nervous or having to worry about things. I've had stuff like that happen. I've had people in my family the life insurance, they didn't have it. I had somebody that had it and didn't pay it. And then somebody passes away. I'm talking suddenly within a week gone. That's the way life is. You know, you live and you die. And the tough part about it, you don't know when you go. And having life insurance really saves everybody. The headache of, of, of funeral costs, of all the stuff that goes into somebody passing away. And then what happens after that? How do you pay the mortgage, the car notes, food? Well, if you have life insurance, you're all right. At least you're relieving them of that stress. They've already lost someone they love. Please, you you don't leave them with financial burden too. Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com slash YKWD and answer a few questions. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The team of licensed experts at Policy Genius will help you understand your options and apply the policy you choose. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. You can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. Policy Genius, they don't add extra fees. All right, it doesn't sell your info to third parties. Policy Genius has thousands of five-star reviews across Google. And and trust pilot. Okay, listen, Policy Genius is the way to go. They have options that offer covering coverage in a, as little as a week and, and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Since 2014, Policy Genius has helped over 30 million people shop for insurance and place over 120 billion in coverage. Okay, head to Policy Genius dot com slash ykwd to get your free life insurance quote and see how much you could save i want to tell you about a 
amazing company that me and my wife found. We've been going to New Hampshire for the last 30 years uh, vacationing, and we love it up there. We've been renting, and we've been a guest, and we've always wanted to own, but we couldn't afford it. It was just out of our reach until we found Tiny Homes of Maine. Uh, this company is amazing. It's a husband and wife. It's a family-owned business, and they make the most amazing tiny homes on the market. They're built to withstand Maine winters, and they look amazing. They're fully customizable, and uh, they have three different sizes. You should check them out. If you're thinking about you know, having a second home or maybe downsizing or you know, just having uh, an office, go tiny. And go to Tiny Homes of Maine. The company is amazing, and uh, they help you every single step of the way. From finding the right one for you, from making it from the, the ground up, and to finding about the laws in your area and financing, you couldn't go with a more amazing company and a more amazing family than Tiny Homes of Maine. All right, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Uh, listen, relationships take work. Uh, every relationship in your life, whether it's your kids, your family, your friends, your boss, coworkers, it all takes work. It all takes time. It all starts with who? You. Even taking the train, even, uh, you know, driving in traffic. Are you finding yourself snapping? Are you thinking too much? You got anxiety like me? Are you waking up in the middle of the night? Is the pressure getting to you? Everything's going crazy right now. The world seems to be going nuts. But you know what? You don't have to. You don't have to. You can take care of yourself. How do you do that? Do you white knuckle it? Do you force it? No. There's certain things you can't talk to your mom, your friends, your wife, your husband about. So you need a therapist. You need somebody to be there for you. I do. I go to therapy. I use BetterHelp. And you know what? It's a neutral place where I get to let my emotions out, listen to somebody, help me, guide me, and talk to me. And you don't have, you don't have to leave your house. I mean, listen, this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy, they, they want you to know that you have to take care of the most important relationship of your life. And that's the one you have with yourself. Whether you want to hit the gym, making time for a haircut, uh, you know, or even trying therapy. You're the greatest asset you got. So invest time and effort into yourself. Okay? And that way, you know what? You can be there for other people. You can do the things you want to do, but most of all, you'll be happy in the day you have, which is the only one right now. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't even have to see anybody on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you, you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try. And see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And you know what, dude? Listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash dude. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash dude. He's not Every stuck. time. The, and then when some of them, some of them were good enough to be able to go, but, and I rise up. <laughs> but the ones that weren't able to go, and I rise up, were scared by that everyone... <laughs> It's on YouTube. It's I, I've I, I've given it seven thousand views. Uh, uh, My daughter's even like we're having a fight ever. It's uh, bring us right back together. I go, hey, hey, kiddo, I come my on. Headphones. <laughs> Why were they scared? They were scared of because because the there'd be nothing, and then all of a sudden, a hundred of them go rise up, <laughs> and said, that would like shock them because like they were like you know the chorus they, spooked them. They were spinning that, in circles. Can we bring that? Can I see that? Yes, please? I. This is a very good description. What? what a, <laughs> Night of too many stars, uh, rise up. The end, rise up. Oh, shit, dude. I'm telling you, they, op they, open, they open something in the back, and they just, it's like <laughs> World War Z. Like, like, a like a train cart where they kept them, <laughs> yeah. and they shipped them to the next Someone circus. Yeah, someone blew the lock on that thing, and they just all come out on stage. It's, it's, what was it like? Just was it like jailbreak? Was it like Walking Dead when they broke through the walls? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that, with that aimless. Oh, shit. It's really You fun. got it? I'm looking for it. Mm. Oh my Holy god. Hell. 
It's just, <laughs> rise up. <Yeah>. Rise <laughs> up. Dude, the kid air guitar is actually my fan. The other one trying to conduct. Oh, anyway. the conductors. But the one kid is like, he's not even listening to that song. He's, 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 he's fucking John Mayer. <laughs> oh, shit. It's great. <laughs> oh, here we it? go. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> Donate now. Did you donate? Is this you the beginning have. or is this is this the the rise up part? First of all, in this donate to this, John Stewart in the middle of it does uh just hey, who in the audience will give uh five thousand dollars? It's it's so weird. But it's a good thing. <laughs> oh my god. I can't hear. Oh, this is good. This is it? Yeah. Oh, this is it. So you can skip ahead. Because you can get to just her and the other girl do the song. Yeah, it's, right I go right there. I, I'm already feeling terrible. Don't. Why? I, I'm already Why? guilty. Why do you feel guilty? This <laughs> girl's doing fantastic. I, this is what this, the performance should have been. This because I got a she's glimpse. Amazing. She's I, see, amazing. I got, a, I got a glimpse of the toothy kid in the back. Oh, buddy, <laughs> buckle up for this cast of characters. I got a this glimpse in the back. I got a this glimpse why, of the This course. is my comic. This is why we all get taken down. This is why they, the world wants our heads because we laugh at. <laughs> ah, oh boy! Now, well, don't raise kids near power lines. <laughs> Stop fucking cousins, South. I'm talking to you, South. See, I got a glimpse. Is that of the where chorus. they live under that bridge? Yes. <laughs> and buddy, they come calling. <laughs> I don't see shit. This, oh, these poor. She sings great. She's phenomenal. She's, yeah, phenomenal. she's the best and the brightest of the bunch. Who's that? That's David Byrne. Oh, that's probably I don't know. that's probably a tired twenty-year-old parent. <laughs> Why are there no lights on anybody? Oh, because come on, Bobby. <laughs> no, really. Because the lights spook him. Yeah. Uh, who's that? That's the girl from The Outsider. She's not handicapped at all. Well, I mean, socially, but. <laughs> socially. Socioeconomically, she is, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's awesome. She's a good actress. She was in a. Uh... This is great. No, right. no, oh, no. <laughs> guys have no, no, no. When do we kick it in? Oh, buddy. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, that one's going to bite if he <laughs> hears too much. <laughs> right. oh. Oh boy! Oh, no. oh, oh. Here we go. Yeah. Here's the air guitar <laughs> kid. Boom! <laughs> Woo! Oh, he's Dude, he's a, a different he's a lefty song. like Hendrix. <laughs> yeah, strung upside down from motherfucking genius. <laughs> he's having a great time, man. Look at him. And here they go, dude. Right. I'm telling you, <laughs> well, fucking I'm release, the, release the kraken. I might lose a fucking kidney here. Release the kraken. <laughs> they have extra security for that lady. This is something wrong. With you. She goes, are they going to get to me? They're not going to get to me, are they? They're so strong. She jumps on the piano. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'll tell you, they peel out like World War Z. <laughs> Remember that when they just make a wall of each other to get over the wall? You have to rub You have to rub them on you to walk through <laughs> them. <without getting attacked. laughs> you got to get their stink. Here they go. Oh, shit. <laughs> open up. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jethro left the card open. Oh, it's choreographed? Uh, yep. Uh, uh, it's beautiful. This is beautiful. Beautiful. Go to the end when they really start wailing. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking beautiful, dude. It's coming back, it's coming back around. Big... <laughs> These parents are so happy. They're her parents. It's like, wow, our daughter is yeah, fine. By She's comparison, really great. holy hell. Yeah, boom, dude. Look at it. the guitar. Oh, good for them. Did they make the money? Uh, yeah, probably. Anyway, all right. That really uh, brought me and my daughter together. Really overshadowing <laughs> the handicapped kid. It was the hardest I've ever seen her laugh in my life. Well, it was my commentary, but oh, jeez. We all acknowledge it's a fantastic. Oh, thing. I was crying. <laughs> That's a good thing. I think it is a good thing. It's I fantastic. Should, and it's can you good. show the uh, Colbert thing where the girl has the meltdown? <laughs> <laughs> what happens? What is it? Why, uh, go Joe to has, Jay has jukebox knowledge. Go, oh, uh, Joe, Jay is a savant I know. when it comes to remembering shit. I know. It's crazy. Lyrically. I got it. Yeah, uh, that's a good I one. can't remember kids with, shit. Kids with mental handicaps. Yeah, I saw shit yesterday. I can't even think. I was like, that'd be good for the show. And I can't remember what the fuck I have it was. terrible minute to minute memory. <laughs> but I'm good about things. She has years a role of decks of mentally challenged are you thinking about having videos. A, are you thinking about having a kid? One day. Yeah. Yeah. How old are you? 42. Nah, don't. It, what? <laughs> don't. My well, dad didn't start. I mean, Bobby did. It's cool. My dad didn't <laughs> start until 55. My dad had his first ch child at 55. Right. 
And then first of how many? Two. And my kid sister is sixty three. Mm. Your kid sister's uh, sixty three. Excuse me. He had her at sixty three. Damn. Jesus. He lived till ninety six. That's fucking World War Two blood. That's yeah, he was a World War II veteran. Yeah, that's the greatest generation blood. Yeah, that's when before they ate fucking uh, preservatives. Yeah, in TV dinners. Yeah, they were just eating a cow that was killed a week ago and milk. Yeah. that was made a day ago. Did yeah. he have fun like World War Two knowledge? He's like, truth oh, yeah. be told, dude. And Frank was a spoiled bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he had like World War Two language. You know, he'd call like machine he like old machine parts he'd say as like if we all knew it he'd be like don't you got to take care of that car the transom's gonna run out you're like the transom transom what the fuck's a transom i've never heard of it before. yeah you can't call them transoms anymore that's what i mean you have to ask for their pronouns <laughs> <That's pretty woke. laughs> like you'd watch sports he'd be like uh, football he'd be like you know the problem with this team they don't have a good flanker you're a flanker yeah, you're like you mean running back that's my idea for a float anchor it's my, i'm gonna make a million flank. dollars with that idea he had old language, old timey language. Wow, is he still around? No, nah, he died two years ago. That was a dumb twenty twenty. I'm sorry. I I mean, he made it long. Ninety six. He was ninety six like, is old. I know, and he was crazy, like active, right up until probably like the last six. Was what do you mean? He hold your hand and he go. I told you the nips would never get me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like physically fit, like <laughs> yard work and shit. My grandfather did the same thing. He had a garden. Yeah. He was 101. Yeah. He stopped. He, he, he retired at 70 from the government. He worked at the ATF. And then he went and he went and worked for my uncle hanging wallpaper at 70. Yeah. My dad worked and through his 80s. Do you? That's, do it's you, a different generation. But, are, but it's a different generation. But are you... Does that give you a little confidence that like you got you probably have a good run in you if you don't fuck up too bad? I have a good run in me if I can drop this weight. The weight is the thing that's, that's, that's killing yeah. me because was my, your father or grandfather heavy? My grandmother was heavy on her side. She had diabetes, but she also lived till she was ninety two. See, I don't know who that's you take. Yeah, my dad's family are the big guys, and my mom's family's not. Big. Well, people tell me that they're like, "Oh, you got good genes," you know. I'm like, "Yeah, I don't think my dad drank like a fish though either every weekend." Yeah, I, that's the one thing I haven't used drugs or alcohol in yeah. thirty six years. Yeah. But I have OD'd on fucking uh, uh, corn syrup many a night. <laughs> High fructose corn syrup. Yeah. yeah. Snickers. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I mean. Do you remember they made the commercials a few years back? They were like, high fructose corn syrup. And someone was like, ew, don't use that. I go, why? It's fine. It's what you've been eating your whole life. It's like pr- positive high fructose corn syrup commercials. No shit. No, I don't. Swear to God. When was that? I don't remember. A couple years ago, and it was like high fructose, and people would go, "How dare you?" And it's like, it's fine. You can't. I mean, it's illegal in Europe. Is it really? Yeah, like certain shit like that, they don't even use. (laughs) They're like, "Yeah, we can't." That's illegal. That's fucking poison. (laughs) It's crazy. I don't. I couldn't even tell you the difference. What I don't know what high fructose is. They use words. They 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 learn how to make. They learn to replace sugar. Sugar is very expensive. It's only grown in certain areas. Corn, we had an abundance uh-huh. of in this country. In we the got 50s. a lot of corn, a lot, and we're seething with fructose. Yeah, and they made sugar. <laughs> they made sugar out of corn. Oh, okay. So they replaced. That's Sounds like good. Co- coke used to be with sugar. Ah, uh, I love it. Like Mexican Coke is just made with real sugar. That's tasty. Sugar. American Coke is made with corn syrup. Oh, so it's, it's garbage. A lot of shit. Everything's going to shit. Ritz, you can't even fucking you put shit on anymore. It just breaks. What happened to Ritz? They don't make them the way they used to. The, I feel it old when I say this, too. I'm a club cracker guy. Club. Yeah, club's nice. It's buttery. Buttery. Yeah. Dude, I can't do a club cracker. Oh, get the hell it's out It's an elitist here. cracker. I'm, I'm, I'm a regular. Yeah, I'm, I'm a premium. I'm a premium. It is. Uh, the club cracker is solid for all of my assorted Trader Joe's spreads. <laughs> uh, it holds a liverwurst nice. <laughs> so talk about elite. A liverwurst is an elite. I'm a. I'm, I'm down with the guy. I'm well, down with the pate. It's elite. If you call it liverwurst, it's I, yeah. I'm down with the regular people. I'm a premium cracker. Wheat thin soup. I mean, I'll do a wheat thin. Any refrigerated day. wheat thin. Wheat. What? That's my grandma. Refrigerated wheat thins is fucking delicious. Sugar and wheat thins. I you know it. that? No. Uh, no. There's sugar in them. You said in them. Oh, you ever taste them? They're, 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 they're sweet. What about wheat a? Thin, how about a triscuit? Oh, love it. Do a fucking Triscuit. I loved I used to hate them as a kid. Uh, uh, a salted Triscuit I could take down by itself, but it, yes. Triscuit's good for something on it. Triscuit you need to build uh, on. Yeah. Uh, wheat thin, I'll eat plain. Triscuit, cheese, salamo. Yes. 
I love that. Absolutely. I love that. Trisket. Let's go about a sociable. Sociable is no good. I don't know if I. It's like chive crackers. That's what I don't like. <laughs> chive. About. Let me throw this Fuck at you. Guys. Have you ever had a stoned wheat thin? Yeah. The white. No. Yeah. It's nice. I could no. tell you uh, a cracker that I still like. I like a lot. You could eat it alone. And oftentimes you have to because it's another one that's made of fucking balsa wood. But <laughs> uh, Bobby Kelly on the road took me on one of my first ever. Oh, we have. Uh, I think it was trying to make sure we didn't, you, you were trying not to gain weight. Yep. Again. Some, and uh, yeah. And you were like, oh, we'll go shopping because we have little refrigerators. And we got a uh, salami cheese and Breton crackers. Yeah. Uh, Breton. Breton. Yeah. Those are pretty good. But yeah. Unless you're putting a big piece of cheese and salami. If you try to spread something on a Breton cracker, Forget you're going to fucking, it. you might as well butter your hand. It's over. <laughs> you can't put anything on. You're going to just lie it gently on top. You have to be, yeah, you have to place something yeah. Yeah. and then really hope you don't pulverize yeah, the whole absolutely. thing on yeah. that first bite. That's, you as, have a light that's touch. as gentle as the shroud of Jesus. You have to be very careful with that thing, man. Yeah. What about a classic Graham? Straight a up graham, graham cracker. cracker. Oh, all graham, day long. I mean, dude, graham cracker. I eat it, those plain with milk. You give me, you give me a sleeve of graham crackers. A grip, Bobby, please. Uh, how about a grip of graham crackers? <laughs> a whole sleeve on those. Irish butter on top. Irish butter. You ever put butter I, on a I graham cracker? I don't know cracker? what Irish. No, butter is. but I bet that's fucking awesome. That doesn't blow. Irish right. butter is. It's like it's yellow butter. It's like real uh, butter. Uh, Do you recall? For a while, I don't know if you even have these anymore, but they were good. They made a chocolate graham cracker that would have like sugar on it. They don't make it anymore. No. The sugar, like like crystallized it's hard sugar. To find, yeah. Oh yeah, that that, that in a glass but that's of milk, like a ginger snap cookie, right? Bitch. That, dude, that you know, I always grew up completely on skim milk too. Oh, I didn't really? even get to realize. As an, I did too. I get. I didn't even get to Number realize two, two percenter. percenter. Yeah. I didn't get to Do a experience a whole milk with a cookie until I was an adult. It's a whole other now. Yeah, are you kidding me? The thing is, I drank a lot of milk when I was younger. I drink no just milk now, really. No. So I had like, no milk. My mother drank, made me and my sister drink water. We didn't have enough money to drink milk. So she made us drink water with every meal. The milk was for her tea. You could have tea. I remember making, because I wanted milk, I would have a hot cup of tea. I lit my pajamas on fire once, my onesies, because I was In trying protest? to make tea, <laughs> and I, I caught it on fire, and it, it just went, and it like flash flamed just the fuzzies on my, like I, I literally went, ah! <laughs> and it was my, over. My that was it. Yeah, it was it. It, it was, was over, over before it began. No, it was. It was scary. It was scary. I saw a stripper do that with her pussy hair. <laughs> what do you mean? At, at a, a, bat, a comedian's bachelor party years ago, actually, uh, there was a stripper. I, what's weird is I think I saw her on Chappelle's show eventually. But I think she's a girl who walks up to Wayne Brady. Oh, that's I know exactly who you mean. She has like a like a shaved head. Thank sort you, of like, Daddy. Yeah, and she has like <laughs> she has short hair. I'm pretty sure that was her. I can picture her. But she did a thing at this bachelor party where she put like Vaseline. She's a real stripper. A, yeah, yeah. And a comedian or actress? She's a comedian. She was, just, yeah. She, she played a hooker in a Chappelle show. So, okay. <laughs> yes. But uh, she put like Vaseline on her pussy hair and then uh, puts like whatever, I don't know, I guess rubbing alcohol like on top of the, on top of the Vaseline and then like has a little tf- torch flame and it like light ignites her pussy up but it's the vaseline saves her pussy but the hair you smell yeah burning oh, pussy hair bush there burning bush was, hair. i feel bad for strippers because it got to a point where it was like it wasn't enough you had to be like it was like that magician thing where you had to come up with a trick yeah that just closed the show down yeah you had to yeah. stick something in there and shoot it into some dude's pocket or well if you want to get me out of my chair that's what's going to happen for sure i want to see the uh like if i'm going if, if i'm going to go to a strip club at this point man it has to be like what's the weird thing about it or so i'd go like i would go with friends and and i've never been to this place but the one in atlanta is uh claremont being, lounge claremont lounge so what like, is that what, what is it it's they, a don't hire, they don't hire it's under 55 yeah. i think yeah it's old what is it they don't hire what strippers under 50 claremont lounge or 50, still there maybe 50 so they're old strippers yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a lot of miles. Nice. So, so what do they fun. do? I would go. I don't know. I heard it's pretty raunchy, but I've that never been there. Strip, I'd though. go though. I'd, that's something I would go to. I would check that out. But like to just go to a strip club anymore, like, I've yeah. zero interest. What well, was the I, one? Yeah, so much. Was money. she doing a show because it was a bachelor party, or do you think that was a part of her um, normal routine? Because they sometimes do it up for the bachelor party. They'll what do you that's mean? Awesome. Spend, they'll do special stuff extra. Like oh yeah, no, yeah. I, I, got, to, I got blown at one. Yeah. Well, here's that. When I used to drive the girls. I did that as a job. Like, Long time ago. Drive, I'm fucking driving the, time date on that. <laughs> driving in the uh, bachelor parties and stuff. It was so funny. Each girl did. Some girls were some girls were hookers. And they could all fuck them. Sometimes they were like 
just strippers and you could barely touch them. Sometimes they were, you could do all kinds of touching to them, but they're not fucking. Right. And everything in between. But like the first time I drove a girl, I thought she was so beautiful. I watched her disintegrate from drugs. It was pretty weird. So I like worked with her a couple of times. And then again, like a year and a half later. Ah. And like when I saw her, I was like, oh, she was like the odd girl at the party where like when I brought her to the guys were kind of like, ugh. And this girl was a knockout. Wow. But I drove her to the What was that, night. meth? Well, yeah, probably or heroin or something. Oh, yeah. South Jersey, probably heroin. But they, uh, she, the first time I went out with her, I was just so, you know, so she was so hot. And she was like talking to me because I'm driving her and she's like, you know, honeyed and doll and all that shit. And I'm like, I'm falling for it all. <laughs> she's not even working me. I'm just being worked just because yeah, I'm yeah. letting myself. Yeah, because I'm so into her. <laughs> and uh, I remember she went to that night at the party. She was this thing. She goes, all right, guys, last thing. She goes, we're doing fives, tens, and twenties. And it was like five hours. For five hours, she rolls the five up. And she puts it like a little bit in her pussy. But her fi- she put her fingers in front of her pussy and puts the five like in her pussy a little bit. And you can bite it out. Ugh. yeah so many levels of i'm ready just the money 20. alone you just keep it uh the 10 she puts it in a little deeper and, oh, and you and you can bite it out and for 20 she puts it uh almost all the way in you can bite it out but here's the thing five dollars twenty dollar whatever it is you're never getting closer than her fingers do you know what i'm saying her, put, right. her pussy's always you're never getting guardrail with for five dollar one you could put you could fit the five dollars of this much in your mouth do you know what i mean you're not yeah. getting any closer but everyone did 20 and i was like that is so industrious and she's so beautiful and smart yeah. at business i thought she was great <laughs> she was I, praising her acumen oh my god I, br- I brought her flowers the next day because she bought herself flowers that night at a 7-eleven <laughs> and i go oh who are those for and she goes I myself she goes i after a night of work i figure i deserve flowers you know so i buy myself flowers and i go Somebody should really buy you flowers. And I showed up to her fucking house. Probably like creep move of all creep moves. I know where she lives. I dropped her off. I think it's sweet. And then showed up with flowers. Next day I go, someone, someone needs to get you flowers for the hard work you do. I hate you right now. You should. <laughs> you should. I and by hope, the way. I hope you become one of those kids. I hope we have to raise money for you someday. <laughs> and I rise up. <laughs> I rise on the thing. And I rise up. <laughs> fucking Keith went on stage tonight. Yeah. Yeah? First time. What made you think of that? My wild no, right arm kids. movements? <laughs> kids. Those kids. Those kids. <laughs> <laughs> was my wild guitar movements, letting you know. Those kids. Did he really? How'd he yeah. say He went up. He fucking killed, piece yeah. of shit. Right. And Colin went up after him, did a joke, and it bombed. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. I, wasn't, I had to follow his comeback special. <laughs> he goes, I, I apologize. <laughs> he fucking... I apologize. I had to go back to him doing his first show in in a year after having show. I'm sorry that I don't his know. first one. Yeah, first one. Hell yeah. Yeah, he was good. He's fucking killed it. He. I forget what he said. He said something very funny. Oh, he said, "Yeah, I want." He's such a dick. I mean, to think about this. He goes, "I was sitting there going, I want to come back. What's the smallest group of people I can get in front of?" And I was like a Bob Kelly audience. <laughs> <laughs> and it bugged me that everybody got it. That really <laughs> the me. audience was like, there you they are. Were, yeah, there you uh, are. Yeah, we're a fucking small little group of fucking assholes. He did great, though. Good for him. Absolutely. Um, what's this thing about you two? Us two? I got two things I want to talk about. Andy and Jay, I want to talk about you guys work together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Yeah, bonfire, bonfire stories. Do you have any things you want to talk about? Oh, like behind the scenes? Yeah. Uh, no. Nothing? No, we laid it all out. Nothing? I know that when I almost... Got, hang on a second. Well, don't get nervous. Why are you getting nervous? <laughs> uh, when I almost got fired. That's a good one. That's a good one. But see, he's I was there actually, for that. He's, he's actually... Be like, yeah, I got a story. You're like, what's what do you want to know? I'm, I'm not fucking TMZ, dude. I'm just saying that you guys. Were I didn't together. know. Uh, Did well, I present that in a very sneaky way? No. Yeah, you sounded like you were. <laughs> you guys. Uh... You, yeah, you did the. Why don't you have a seat? You, you guys ever uh, rob a particular store together? I don't know why I give you that voice. It's something no, no, very no. ominous, and I don't. I, I agree with you. I did. Can I explain to you why? Please. Because I, I have a list of things I were gonna I wanted to talk about, uh-huh. and I was I'm stupid and I don't have my glasses, 
And I just read, so I read something up. Untold stories. <laughs> I made it sound. My, I made it sound. I'm scared the it's, fuck out of me. I know I did. And he didn't flinch at all. He has, you, Jay has nothing that hasn't been said. I know. He has no secrets. And you do. I don't. I thought you were going to be like, well, why'd you leave the show so abruptly? Oh, if there's an old shroud of mystery, Andy. Did you leave? The, why, why did you leave the show? I, they offered me, uh, <laughs> they, I didn't really have much of a choice. They <laughs> offered me more money <laughs> and to go, uh, be DePaulo's executive producer for two months, for ten. <laughs> <laughs> what? What the fuck happened? You got fired. I was DePaulo. Got f- yeah, you got fired. <laughs> Why did you get fired? I didn't. He oh, did. he did. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can't go here. back. Yeah. Did he you can't. go back? I'm still. I've had the job the whole time. But you're still at yeah. Sirius. Yeah. But who do you work for now? Uh, I just do kind of programming stuff. I don't let's really a work together. on a show now. Me, you, and Voss. We yeah. do something. Let's do something. It's great. Wow, that's not happening. <laughs> he just sounded like the... the, the you think the, I have the power No, you could have lied. I'm not going to check. I said great. I've got as much oomph as I could. You really didn't have any oomph at all. You, you, that's weird. You're, you're like the best friends with Jack Vaughn. What does that mean? If you, if you think your friendship with Jack Vaughn isn't getting you something, then I'm not your guy to go to. That's true. The head of the... The whole thing um, yeah. is one of my best, closest friends, and I don't have a radio show. <laughs> yeah, that's Are seems you close strange. with Jack like that? Yeah, I love him. Me yeah. and Jack have been friends. He's a good dude. Yeah, no, I like Jack very much. We vacation no, together. Really? Yeah, we... we um, are, your kids, are your kids the same age? Yeah, same age. Um, we used to live next to each other on 43rd Street. I've Me and Jack have been friends for a long time. He loves he, you. I love him. He's one of my... Clo- we We're went to, back to Comedy Central Record. Went to Belgium together. Really? Yeah. Um, he called me up. He goes, look, we rented a 10-person canal boat uh, to tour Belgium. Would you and Don and Max like to come? And I just said, yeah. I've been to Guatemala with him twice. Yo, he goes to weird-ass yeah, locations. He called me up. and he goes, I'm going to Guatemala in a couple weeks. You want to go? And I just went, yeah. And I goes, and then, but here's the thing is the night before we were leaving, I Googled Guatemala. Mm-hmm. And it said, don't go. Right. Did you go? <laughs> yeah, I called him up. I like, dude. This website saying if you don't have to go, don't go. It's saying you'll be robbed. They'll steal your underwear at the airport. He's like, yeah, underwear. but we'll be all right. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> I got a money belt. What does he know? Krav Maga or something? Dude, he, he's so interesting. He lived in Guatemala for five years, high school years. Didn't and his dad invent war. the Peace Corps or some shit. Dude, his dad is the motherfucker. He's the actual Indiana Jones. His dad, he's got a book. I forget the name of the book. Uh, he, he had them I think, up the crystal skull. He had three. He survived three plane crashes and seven assassinations. Jesus, Jesus. no shit. Jack Vaughn's dad is no joke. Jack Vaughn's dad was. the Holy Grail. <laughs> Jack, Jack, dude. Vaughn Jack called me up. Doom. Jack called me up one time. He's like, dude, I, I'm renting a helicopter and going into the jungles of Guatemala. There's a lost city they haven't found yet. Will you want to come? And I was like, no, I don't want. I would, can we hey, go to a Aruba? Great sidekick <laughs> on that adventure. <laughs> We're looking for the elusive seventy-five foot yeah. dragon alligator, right. dude. I'm telling you. We're looking for the jade monkey, dude. We because meanwhile, in- I'm going to be proofing some new albums. I got to put up on <laughs> uh, Raw Dog. Mulaney guy is pretty good, <laughs> dude. He called me up. Well, we were, we're in Guatemala. He said, "Just uh, we rented a car. <laughs> I was so scared. I had a money belt." I brought, I don't know why, I brought $400 with me, mm. cash. Like, we're going to Cozumel. Like, I'm going to buy some hats and a wrestling mask. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what I mean? This is a third world country. There's nowhere to go. There's no, yeah. and shit. You uh, neg- excuse me, sir. Where is there a senior frogs around here? <laughs> <laughs> I Buddy, I had to tell. Also, that money belt ain't doing shit. Well, here's- uh, Los uh, McDonald's <laughs> Embassy. <laughs> We drive. <laughs> I got, I got this ma- I'm so fat. I when I take the money belt out, I still have to bring it up to my tits <laughs> because I can't. So I can't. Money belts were made for thin people. I can't see the money under my stomach. So I had. I had wearing that thing that would check Drago's heart rate when he trained. <laughs> you go, hang on. Talk about someone who needs to be singing "Rise Up." You're saying, I have some money in my, f- my fanny titty pack. And I had to bring it up. I, I had to bring it up to my tits, and I'm literally going, "Hang on, it's like 100." Right? You don't want to show everybody. Yeah, I don't want to show you, but please then, don't look, sir. So he takes me down to uh, in the city, Guatemala. 
he takes me to a park in Guatemala. The city itself underneath it is just ruins. Like over thousands of years, dirt and trees and people dying and they just covered it. So in one of the parks, you can walk in. It's a park and um, they excavated a certain section of it. And it's like apocalypto. It's fucking crazy. You're walking through a park. I picked up like a piece of uh, a ceramic mug from a thousand years ago. Just on the floor. Just on the floor. Like obsidian knives that they use to cut and kill shit. You can just walk around and you'll see it on the ground and you can pick it up. Lux like said, <laughs> like world's best look, boss. Look at that, a cave carving about Godzilla and King Kong fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so so he takes me there and then we get in the car and then we're driving in traffic next to chicken buses the whole time. And I'm panicking. He's trying to teach me uno, uno, dos, dos, tres, cuatro su nombre. Uh, he's trying to teach how many me. chickens, Bobby? <laughs> he's, trying to, <laughs> he's trying to teach me Spanish. We're driving through. There's a lot of pollo. Yeah? <laughs> See, spot on. Um, duele, bagala. <laughs> <laughs> so we we get out of the city, and now we're on these jungle roads. And at one point, he goes, um, he goes, okay, listen to me. The next fifteen to twenty minutes, if there's a if there's a roadblock, we're not stopping. I just want you to trust me. Okay, I'm just going through it because the gorillas will stop at this part of the road and try to take you. <laughs> the gorilla like, soldiers. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, why? Are we I don't here? know. If you told me if you told yeah. me a gorilla was going to come take me, I, I'd say like which like I, Caesar, I, I, like both. Yeah, like that's scary as hell too. <laughs> Do you see a silverback? Caesar. Keep driving because these gorillas don't take <laughs> that shit. That would have made more sense. They will take your fucking door off, dude. Do not slow down. That would have made It's the funniest thing, too. Where's Bobby? Goes, In the trees, Apes man. Got I don't know. <laughs> Fuck all knows. You see those things moving packs. Dude, I was so fucking scared. You understand? It's, and you got little thin Jack Vaughn. This guy, I can't believe 130 this. pounds wet. And he's like, I'm not. He looks at me. I'm not stopping. You got to trust me. Are you on foot? We're, no, we're in a car. Oh. We're in a fucking. We're in a Mitsubishi, <laughs> a four door Mitsubishi with a fucking engine problems that he rented. And we, at one point, we took a left, and this fucking dog, the size of a horse, me and him still talk about it. Like I, we don't even know what it was. Just came out of this area and went. Whoop! By my window. Like, it, I was like, what was that? And he just said, I don't know. And he stepped in the guest. Did you guys go to a portal in Narnia? Yeah. <laughs> just Avatar? All of a sudden, he takes me to this town uh, in Tigray. And it's like going back in time. It's all cobblestones. It's like an old Western movie. And it's beautiful. And there's a lot of tourists. And there's art. And it's, you know, people stay there. And we went to this beautiful uh, outdoor restaurant. And, uh, you know, he's a vegetarian, so he's yeah. just rice and beans every fucking night. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, what do we get? Like Andrew Zimmerman, you know, I'm like, what's what's the thing here? And he's like, Bobby, I, it, by night two, he was like, it's chicken, beef, <laughs> rice, beans. That's all. You, there's no, you know, this isn't fucking Philly. Like Can't we mix it no, up. Yeah. So I, I remember I was so nervous. I went upstairs to take a shit and I took my money belt off and I left. I left. I left it on the back of the toilet. <laughs> Because I forgot to put it back on. Yeah. Because it was white like the toilet. And I now just left. Now someone's a billionaire down there. <laughs> left. <laughs> Could you imagine leaving $400? Probably a town named Cash. It, you know? Was your ID in there? Yeah. Fat, bald, white yeah, man. You saved your cane. There's a statue of me down there. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Roberto. Mr. Bobby came and he figured everything. <laughs> Mr. Bobby. <laughs> Mr. Bobby came. He left us present in the bowl and on the bowl. I want to clean to it like I do every day. Yeah. We save his poopoos in case he come back. The dogs can smell him. <laughs> Dude, it was fucking... I like that. I like that. I picturing you at some point, like you're smacking bugs of yourself, and then you see Jack Vaughn's like like holding a knife, like like he's going to throw it at you, and you go, Jack, what do you... And he throws yeah. it, and it kills a snake right next to your head. And he's like, that was the brown recluse, and that thing was going to take you... Yeah. I like Jack wants an adventure behind the scenes. I know. It's crazy, dude. He's Little so guy in the corner office, I thought. That's Who knew? It. So we go to uh, 
then we drive the next we drive the rest that we leave that place I, my 400 bucks is gone i'm crushed and he doesn't he's like dude why did you bring 400 dollars it cost Walking around money it's going to cost you. He's going to hold my bag. I have to spear fight this guy now for the death. <laughs> so, then we drive through the jungle jungle in the middle of the night in rain. Jack is scared because we're on roads. Oh, shit. That's, like, that's like seeing a stewardess panic. Yeah. That's <laughs> fucking terrifying. Well, he He's goes, guy. these roads like off to the right. It's just a drop off a cliff. Why are you leaving at this time, though? Because we got to get to this other city. We only have two days before. Yeah, you got. There's other people. There's other explorers trying to find this. <laughs> what are you guys uncharted? <laughs> so <laughs> Nick Drake, Jack Vaughn, first. and Bobby Kelly. <laughs> so we we're driving through the rain. He can't see. We're on a like literally a mountain cliff. If if he makes the wrong turn or boulder anything, like those chicken buses fly off these roads into the ditch. All and people just die all the time. Don't you and worry. The, I know these rides like the back of my hand. <laughs> There's only enough room for uh, two cars barely on this thing. Never mind a bus in a car. So as we're coming, these chicken buses are coming down. You and see chickens going off the side. It's frightening <laughs> just to see these buses. And you see headlights. Yeah. It was it was nuts. We get up over the mountain. All of a sudden, the rain goes away. We pull into this little town. And we check into this fucking amazing hotel. Into this town, we walk down. You had to put a jewel in a skull's <laughs> eye <laughs> and solve a riddle. Yeah, and he goes, "Welcome to the Hilton. Thank you. <laughs> Everything here is a lost gold treasure." We went. We went. Uh, we <laughs> we went into this beautiful hotel, and then we walked down the street at night, and it was weird because it's you know civilized. No, it's not at all. It's like you know the street vendors and. Yeah. Dirt street and there's dogs and there's people looking at you weird and here's you know me with her, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I, I look mean, like the tough one, but it's not. Uh, right. If they come up, I'm you're, gonna. You're, you're in Guatemala to buy people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you uh, came on a Cessna. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We always, look like Jurassic Park. You're always patting your brow or something. <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, how much for that one? <laughs> so. Uh, how much for the one with a scar on her face? <laughs> so you guys are at a human auction. Slightly damaged. So we. Yeah, Why we, are we driving uh, off this cliff in the middle of the night? He goes. Human auction starts at three a.m. <laughs> the catacombs. <laughs> the hotel was beautiful. Um, you can't drink the water. You when you take a shower, you got to shut your mouth. You can't. You can't fuck around down there. Brush your teeth with bottle water. You got to use bottled yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. And um. I woke what up is is it parasites or something? What's in it so bad? Yeah, yeah. amoebas and shit yeah. that we're not used to. They're used to. You could slowly drink it and get sick, but then you'd be used to it and you'd be fine to drink it after a while. I'm pretty sure, right? Acclimated toward the water. You do. You get acclimated towards the water. Absolutely. Yeah. No, but that seems hellish. Eh, I guess it's just. I mean, I don't know. So I don't know with the with parasites now. Yeah, I think it's it, um, amoebas. I don't know what it is. I don't think we're. I know that it was don't do it, <laughs> and I did it. No. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, I ordered a... The next day, we woke up, had this beautiful breakfast, and there's a lake behind us, and he took me on a boat. We get on this boat. <laughs> Would you drink from the lake like a deer? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Barbara, what are you doing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't spook him. No, 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 Bobby. No, not the one. <laughs> Bobby scampers off. <laughs> Yeah. He just runs into the woods. <sighs> the majesty of nature, though, huh? <laughs> so we get to this Bobby's island. Bobby's drinking. Shh, Bobby's water. drinking at all. And there's a volcano there. And we get to this island. Oh. And he, this kid walks up to us. Oh, he, no. I can't describe it. He had a little kid body, but he had a man face. Like he, And he had a scar on his face. And he looked like a James Bond villain, but a little kid. Yeah. And he came up, and Jack was like, you take him to uh, Maximone. And, and I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, he's going to take you somewhere. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking? He goes, Bobby, I want you to go see this. It's Maximone. It's, it, they pray to him. It's a god. The, he's going to take you. I go, can you come? He's like, no, you go by yourself. you got to do something. You, and I'm like, mm, I'm not that guy, Jack. What is it? I don't want to be that guy. You think of some point Jack's it? taking you to a, one of those hostels where you can kill people? <laughs> Dude, yeah. I, I'm panicking. <laughs> I'm fucking panicking. You can, you can blow torches. Bobby, if you had to kill 
let's say a teenage girl anyway what would you do it like nail gun to the eyes or what's up he what? goes he goes like this i have to go over here for a little while because oh. he was going to go to a uh there was an open air market uh oh, like in, like you know I got, a, I got a pangolin to fuck <laughs> bobby you do your thing i need I'm my gonna go fuck I, a pangolin <laughs> from a wet market <laughs> glad that we know what a pangolin I is now spices. Of, so this kid takes me up this hill into this village into somebody's house Huh. And uh, I go in, and um, there's this statue. I bring up Max Simone Is this in Guatemala. Kid, Max? No, not at all. Um, the statue. Let me know when you got it. Um, Did he speak English completely? The kid? No, he spoke. He spoke no English. No English. He Jack speaks Spanish. But he just sends you off. He sends me off with no the kid, Spanish. no Spanish, but I know uno, dos, tres, cuatro, Thank cinco, God. Well, now. cuatro, su nombre. Well, you were counting the pollos. <laughs> <laughs> so he brings me this Max Simone right there. So he's this guy with a hat. <laughs> That's the guy who brings coffee. I'm, looks like a tie rack. And you got to go into the house and you give cigarettes offering to him or alcohol. And I went into this house and it's me and this kid. And then the kid, I come out and he's like, okay. And he takes me down to like a street and he goes, bye. And he just leaves. Before we started undressing in front of you. <laughs> Is this what you want, Mr. Bobby? <laughs> I don't understand you? the... Your friend paid in advance for you. <laughs> Who is Holy this guy? shit, Jack. What are you setting me up with here? <laughs> that was... That's one of the other kids. <laughs> <laughs> He's petrified. <laughs> He's a petrified kid. That was the original kid. That Jack. That, that is Jack's, that's, yeah. Jack's <laughs> grandfather bought. <laughs> it looks like Joe Boo. This is Jack's grandfather's mommy baby. Show is this gonna be another picture? Show it's not just one. Like I saw a yeah. bunch of them, but um, he's wearing the shirt of the Fresh Prince. Yeah, right. A, yeah, yeah. Like they had, like yeah. It's kind of creepy, dude. You, I'm in this house, and here is this thing that you go see. Yeah, there you go. There it is. That the one down the bottom, right? The down of the cigarettes and booze. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's you give hilarious. You give them cigarettes. Yeah, I, I was smoking at the time. But you, oh, you are you're a smoker. Yeah, I was smoking at the time. So you throw cigarettes over there and and alcohol, and there you go. So well, I'd be like, ah, I only have one left. Yeah. <laughs> it's like something comes to life in a trip. <laughs> it's like something comes to life in a Tales from the Hood Part Three. <laughs> I actually, I'm walking the streets trying to find Jack, and then I walk through the open air market, and there's literally just a dog dying <laughs> on the street, it's like taking its Head last on. breath, and then. I'm walking through this. I'm, I'm I'm towering over everybody. I'm just walking through this. They, they get, you know, vegetables and meats and spices and trinkets. Boy, you would have put on a fucking uh, cowboy hat. You could have been Max Simone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll, I just stopped at this uh, place and I got a coffee and I'm smoking like outside. And then Jack just comes walking down the hill. And I'm like, where the fuck were you? He's like, it was good, right? And I'm like, yeah, but I, I, I was freaking out. And he's like, Oh, good. I'm glad you did it. And then we just got on the boat and went went back. And then the next day, he takes me to a a market. And I, they have these markets. Uh, this market. He took me to uh, this outdoor market, and he took me to a 400 year old church that still people still go to. The, you know, like when you go to church and there's Jesus and all that and Mary. There's black from. They still use candles. There's no electricity. And if you're a gringo, you have to go through the back door. You can't go through. If you're not Guatemalan, you can't go through the front. Racist. Damn. Fucking but, wake up. Guatemala. But people, people going Get in. woke or go broke. Going in and praying. He would just take off and be like, I'll be back. And I'm like, okay, dude. And I would just sit there and smoke a cigarette and have a cup of coffee. Jack Vaughn seems to have uh, an Ari Shafir approach to mm. life. Like, I don't know. Let's just go figure it out when we get there. Yeah. And I need to be much more like, what's the hotel? Are we going to be at a hotel every night? Hundred percent. Like, yeah, it's like I couldn't. Well, he when he went to we went to. I wouldn't uh, be like he goes. Well, we're going to be looking for a lost city. He goes. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, I got eight hours, ten hours. I could throw that out during the day, but at the end of the ten hours, I can be back at a hotel. <laughs> I want to tell yeah. the concierge like concierge. Guess what? Any good strip clubs around here? By the way, we found a lost city. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted me to fucking go in the middle of the Guatemalan jungle. I met a helicopter pilot from Guatemala. He's like. Ask him if he can, if he, if I pay him, if he can fly us into an area, if he can still fly. I'm like, where? He goes, I found this. I'm like, no, I'm not going. No, I have he's a kid. Like, he's like, I, my research has been all these years has been right. Yeah. We are right over one of yeah. the greatest yeah. things. 
You should have went to the top of the volcano and threw uh, vinegar and baking soda inside and see if it can happen. <laughs> we, well, we a little fizz comes out of it. <laughs> Dude, he's crazy. We went to Belgium. It, we get there, and I thought he knew how to do shit, how to, you know, the boat. So we show up in Newport. What is he fighting Kumites? What are yeah, all these things? I don't know. How many well, we, should, have you gone we get to? this boat. This ten, it's a ten-person canal boat. Oh, it's real. Yeah. It's low and long, and you can sleep on it. It's got like three bedrooms in it. And oh really? Oh, I thought it was like a, I was picturing more like a. What do you call? No, it? No, no. It's a. Gondola, it's a uh, fucking gondola? boat. It's called La Boat. And it's that's you, the boat. You can, it's okay. a kitchen. That translate. That all checks yeah. out. <laughs> Tori. Yeah, there's a refrigerator. All this like up a deck upstairs. And so we get there and <laughs> he goes, we have to go learn how to drive the boat. And I'm like, what? We had to take a course on driving the boat. He didn't, he's never driven the boat. I've never driven. We learned there's a guy with like two teeth teaching us how to drive a fucking canal boat. 45 minute course that we just sat there and said, yeah, yeah. And then he threw the keys. He goes, we'll see you in seven days. And then we're on the river on the, on the canal. I mean, and Jack's just nervously, and there's a big canal boat coming down. We have to call the locks and have them like, open the lock, fill it up. You have to tie off bridges. You have to call bridges. There was, I believe, seven bridges and five locks, or three locks we had to go through to get to the first city of Bruges. A bridge is to open for you? You have to call ahead. And the guy has to come out and like crank so open the bridge. You got to make sure you're awake on <laughs> a bridge crossing. Dude, you yeah. have to be awake the whole time because it like boats are coming within three inches of you, like going up and down. What's the point of the bedrooms? Well, you, well, you, you got to take shifts. Well, no, when you so we Dude, made my shift would be nerve wracking. <laughs> uh, everyone's just sleeping here drive at night. <laughs> no, what happens? I'd rather be in a Guatemalan jungle. <laughs> yeah, we're, I'd rather. So be. what happens is we we go to Bruges, right? And as we're pulling heat, like we switch. He goes, "You drive for a while." So I'm driving. You're going up the canal. It's fine. You got to pull into one of the areas where you go as into you the, the city. Trains. And you have to do uh you have to do a three point turn in this huge boat. And then you have to just slowly impossible. Yeah. Just wheel it yeah. I like this boat. Yeah. That's the... <laughs> do the circle K Dude, turn. I was there's sure. a homeless guy on the canal doing this. You got more room. You got about bring her back. You have to call in and rent that little mooring on the canal. Oh, your space? So you kind of I swung. So he's like, you can do it. I'm like, Jack, I can't, I've never I, I have a hard time doing this. I, we're on a boat. And I had to like slowly spin, turn, and then glide into the thing. And then the guy will tie you off. And then you sleep there. So you sleep on the boat. But if you step off the boat, you're in Santa's village. I mean, it's Bruges. It's, yeah, yeah. You ever see the movie yeah, uh, yeah. in Bruges? It's one of the most epic places I've ever been in my life. How it's, so? it's just. It's a fairy tale place. It's like, you know, what you see in movies. Yeah, it looks like cobblestone it's streets and there's castles and there's artwork and it's I mean, it's 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 one of the fucking they had some festival at a park with uh punk German fusion bands playing and people women just walking around topless and kids playing and Max was just playing on the thing with these other kids and there was food everywhere and coffee and it was H one. It's the beginning of an H twenty four horror movie. <laughs> Everything's great till you find out Max is the one they've wanted the entire time. He's the second coming of Jabubu. <laughs> <laughs> this is what sucks about that. I'm not gonna be able to look at Max without going Jabubu. <laughs> second of Jabubu. Every time I see my kid now, I'm Jabubu. not gonna think of his name. I'm the prophecy is fulfilled. Believe you don't call him Max Simone every single uh, day. The past is right. fulfilled. All right, listen, man. We gotta we gotta move on to the other thing before you take off. You gotta leave soon, right? A couple yeah, minutes. About ten. All right, everybody. Listen, um, me and Jay and Ari Shafir are oh, doing a bro. show. Um, a mini tour. Oh, mini okay. tour. Which, you know, Ari, I love it. I'm, and he was like, dude, we should go on tour. I'm like, he's like, with who? I'm like, B Big J. Yeah. And I was like, great, let's do it. Who gives a fuck? It'll be fun. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. Right in the car, doing hours in the car, fucking chilling. We're doing we Jack Vaughn on this tour, I think. <laughs> I know. We don't go dangerous. <laughs> fucking lunatics. Um, it's in, uh, the dates are? 
It is uh, this no, two weekends from now. The dates are. I want to make sure I get the right cities in the right it's one. It's called the uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. One Dick and Two Balls Tour. The One Dick and Two Balls Tour, everybody. <laughs> that is correct. And we are going to be at Summit City Comedy Club uh, on the, the 24th, second show Thursday, is 24th. first show sold out. Second show very limited seating, so get on it. Also, Sixers play the Lakers that night in L.A. Though it's going to be a toughie. Yeah. Uh, Friday, we're going to be at GLC Live at 20 Monroe. That's Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids, come out. And then on Saturday, the Fillmore in Detroit. Uh, that's going to be a that's going to be a fun one, man. I haven't been to Detroit in so many years, so I'm excited. Yeah, Fillmore, to do that. Detroit. So make sure you buy your tickets now. These tickets are selling, and uh, you're going to want to see the show. I don't know who's going up when or what's happening. I hope at some point we all go up together. Oh yeah, and we fucking end hang. Of the show, end of the sure. show, just go up and fucking hang out. But it's uh, one dick, two balls tour. Poster is uh, going to be out this week, and we might have a poster or some type of merch there, to, you know, for you guys. So uh, oh, make sure you check it out. Awesome. Of course, the bonfire with Jay, Andy. You have uh, a new. I'm shooting a special Friday, March 18th. This Friday, where is uh, it at? Two shows: New York Comedy Club, Fourth Street, eight and ten thirty. All right, this is live right now. So all you people watching live, do me a favor, spread the word. If you're in town, come see him. Come support the live special. Hilarious. New York Comedy Club. It's a fu- it's a great venue. Thank you. And uh, and this year is this year what's how many second special? album first special first shoot. special right yeah. first special yeah yeah are you nervous no nah. no nah. not really it hasn't really hit me yet though I think Friday day, really maybe yeah. Thursday that's great dude I feel good about how it. many I've been shows on, just two shows road, yeah two shows two shows that's the way to do it yeah yeah that's awesome I know what to man. wear though I'm still dude. that's like the little things I'm like ah I got to get my beard trimmed yep you know like get it shit is you want to go with me and Dan for Titan Beard Day when I'm gonna be, tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow is when I was gonna do it. Oh, yeah, you have to do it tomorrow. Yeah, that's to. right. No, not tomorrow. <laughs> it's a special. <laughs> it's a special. But, no, no, I just, I'm all day tomorrow. Because uh, I usually get a, uh, I like the barbershop beer trim. Yeah. It's one of my. Me, you, and Dan, dude, we'll yeah. do a little beer trim day. Oh, dude, d- just, you know, it's the shoe you wear, the sneaker, what well, well, matters, I think. Really? Yeah, I think you'll see your shoe a couple times, it'll pop. And just wear a wear a fucking nice wearing, shirt. I think I'm. Uh, I think, I think I'm wearing a hoodie. Wear a hoodie. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's you. We be you. I, that's what I'm gonna. Yeah. I wore a jean jacket the first time my special I did. I, you know, yeah. I dressed up once. I felt uncomfortable on something I did for JFL, and it sucked the life out of I me. Hate it. Right. You gotta right. be. You gotta be comfortable. You that's gotta what do what you do. Yeah. I was yeah. telling Greg's wife, just Stone's wife. She was like, "Wear a hoodie." That's what we yeah. think of when you think of Andy. I was like, "Fuck yeah, yeah wear a hoodie." Um. So make sure you check that out. Thank I'm, you. I'm taping my special. Uh, May 7th in uh, Tampa at uh, uh, Coastal Creatives. Uh, uh, those guys down there, we went down there last Monday. They uh, they are fantastic. Uh, I got my dates up there. But Coastal Creatives, May 7th, I'm very excited about it. It's uh, We're doing two shows in one night. Uh, so make sure you get tickets. They're going to go fast. As soon as they're available, I'll let you know. This week, hopefully, we'll have tickets up. We're gonna leave. We're gonna let some out first from, uh, you know, uh, pre-sale to get all you people who are flying in from New York or Boston or wherever. You'll get those tickets first, so you can sit up front, and then uh, and then everybody else after that. So I can't wait to shoot this special. Wait till you see the the fucking place we're doing that. It's gonna be crazy. Nice. And uh, and then of course my robertkellylive dot com. Go to all my table. You got the 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 Fort Wayne up there with uh, Jay. We got the. Um, Monroe Live and the Fillmore, McCurdy's, all that shit. So go to robertkellylive.com for all my tickets. Stick around. It's not over yet. This episode of YKWD is continuing now exclusively on patreon.com slash robertkelly. See you there. I got to do this ad read real quick to you guys. I want to thank you. Uh, my new small business tier sponsor, uh, Gunter Law Group. Uh, you have a lawyer? I do not. Well. If you learned everything over the past two years, it's to be prepared, not just in the terms of food, water, toilet paper, and uh, uh, some butt cream. Yeah. You like butt cream? I uh, No, I just use baby wipes. Aquaphor? You don't use Aquaphor? I use baby Aquaphor because I get eczema. But also in terms of getting your legal house in order, you got to get your legal. It's not too late, right? You got to do it before it's too late. All right. You know, I mean, look, you have good genes, but, Thank you. you know, not everybody is as good as your dad. Accidents happen. Dude, your dad and my grandfather lived late in life, okay? But, uh, you know, a will lets your loved ones know how to distribute your estate after you die. So they're not fighting over your gallstones and a couple shekels, 
You know, it doesn't matter the size of the estate either. At the very least, you should consider a will, a medical uh, power of attorney, and a DNR. Directive so that you and your loved ones don't have to deal with that decision of pulling the plug and all that bullshit, okay? Uh, one of the most painful times in, in people's lives. At the end of the day, it's one of the most loving things you can do for the people you love is get a will. Let them know what you want to do so in case there is an accident, uh, they don't have to make these decisions. They're already made. So if anywhere, if you're any, anywhere near Texas, contact Kyla Gunter at Gunter Law Group for a free 30-minute, that's a long time, consultation. It's free 30-minute consultation to discuss your options. Go to GunterLawGroup.com. Email Kyla directly at Kyla at GunterLawGroup.com or call her at 682-224-1967. Again, that's 682-224-1967 to set up your consultation today. And if you mention YKWD, she's going to knock off a 25% off her fee. That's crazy. So they're going to knock 25% off the fee. This is legal advertisement and is not intended to be specific legal advice. Dude, uh, this is a fun one. Hell yeah, man. Good one to be back. Um, I'm glad you're on. I'm glad Jay came on. Absolutely. I have to pee like a motherfucker. Usually I, if I have to pee this bad and I wait, we have to do these names real quick. I can't read them because I don't have my pants. glasses. And I will. Oh, there you go. Thanks for making them big. Zach Guido. Zachy. Michelle Gonzalez. Michael. Like I said, I can't read. Let me get my glasses. You read them. Totes my goats. Totes <laughs> underscore my goats. <laughs> Don't make me be. Don't make me be. Totes my goats. That's what it's Why like. does that make me fucking laugh? <laughs> Ashley Malone. Malone. I love girls. Austin joining. Hill. I got laid on Austin. Austin Hill. And Caitlin uh, Guy Tanakis. Guy <laughs> Galatinakis. These fucking Greeks or uh, whatever. Listen, I want to thank you for joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Robert Kelly and supporting all the shit that I do. Uh, it's the best that you're doing that. I love it, you guys. I got a new show coming out uh, uh, very soon that we're going to be announcing. I'm just working out the details. And it's going to be for Patreon. And I also got a show. Me and I are going to do that cigar show. That's going to be out. But I want to thank all you Patreon people, all you YouTube supporters. You guys are the best. Uh, this is only on uh, Patreon right now. So if you're watching this, you're a Patreon member. I love you. Make sure you support our sponsors and make sure you go see this young man uh, this Friday thank night. You. If you're in town, if you're not in town, just go to his thing and retweet his stuff. S tell your thousand people or hundred people or whatever, how many people are following you about his thing. Okay, and 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 uh, you know, and and our uh, one dick and two balls tour. Spread the word. Use your power to help him fill that room Friday night. You're the best. So his special will fucking rock. There's nothing worse than an empty room. <laughs> that would fucking right, but it's not. It's gonna sell out. You thank probably, you, Bob. He only has a few tickets left. So get the fuck. They're away. moving. Uh they are moving. And uh, I want to thank Joe. I want to thank Nicole. I want to thank the Mush wherever he is. Um. And what else do I got to do? What else, Nicole? You're good. Am I good? Yeah, you're great. Thank did you. you did you like the show, Nicole? Yeah, this was awesome. And you crushed the ad read as well. Oh, uh, I like positivity, uh, man. I'm getting into positivity. Nice. Yeah, baby. Nice. Uh, you guys are the best fans in the world. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week on You Know What, Dude. You've been listening to the YKWD Podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go back to your shitty jobs. Shitty jobs. Shitty jobs.